Today my talk will be about uh, libertarians and the views on right to work laws. Uh, right to work laws uh, prohibit unions from requiring all workers within the given company to join a union which I think is a fairly uh, Orwellian use of the term um, right to work, don't you think? But uh, first uh, we should uh, begin with uh, what types of libertarians that exist. In my view there are two types of libertarians. There are so-called left-wing libertarians or libertarian socialists, um, you know, like say Noam Chomsky, and uh, there's right-wing libertarians, like the Koch brothers. What uh, both sides have in common is their avowed support of freedom, right? Which usually means freedom from uh, state coercion um, and you know the en enjoyment of individual freedoms, individual liberty, etc. Uh, but the difference, quite clearly, is that the left-wing uh, is on the side of the workers and the general public, except the very powerful, and the right-wing libertarians are on the side of the rich and the powerful, mostly capitalists. It is obvious that left-wing libertarians will favor unions and therefore oppose uh, right-to-work laws, which in fact do weaken unions, and right-wing libertarians oppose unions and therefore support right-to-work laws. Well, the early enunciation of the split in libertarianism can be read in John Locke, whom I would consider to be a right-wing libertarian, uh, because he defended the interests of the capitalists against the laborer. Adam Smith is somewhere in between because, you know, on the one hand, he did like free markets, which generally favors the capitalists, um, but at the same time, he was also fairly sympathetic of the cause of laborers, um, uh, and supported uh, the organization of trade unions, which was very early at that stage. Uh, Marx, uh, who came latest among the three, was clearly a left-wing libertarian, because obviously he sided uh, with the workers uh, you know, in the cause against uh, exploitation. Um, he also made some negative statements against the state, um, you know, which under the highest form of communism would uh, wither away, as he called it. So in principle, you know, one could say uh, that uh, one is a political centrist, um, you know, a political centrist libertarian, and, you know, we don't necessarily need to have a partisan preference on either side uh, with regard to the right to work issue. But we could only do that if we kept the debate highly abstract and within phil philosophical debate club circles. But here we're talking about problems in the real world, facing workers, facing employers. Uh, and here you have to choose on whose side you are on. Whose freedom uh, should we advocate? Given the worker capitalist conflict, it is not possible for both sides to have an equal amount of freedom. You know, you either have to give it to the one or you have to give it to the other. If you are for right to work laws, then you are at the same time in favor of diminished workers' rights and increased employers' rights. Individual workers who are not in a union are usually screwed against the capitalists unless they have very rare or needed skills. But it is always a tiny minority of the workforce and cannot be considered. Uh, a national policy it cannot be considered the norm. Um, we can only give an indiv individual advice to individual workers, you know, get more education, get more training, etc., etc. But uh, even if we accept a framework of union coercion, restricting workers' individual freedom to uh, stick with the narrative of the right wing, one is also implicitly endorsing the increase of employer coercion in the form of lower wages, longer hours, fewer benefits, and harsher working conditions, as we can certainly see 
to many of the uh, right to work states uh, that we can find in the south, but also increasingly uh, in the northern states. In that case, union coercion, if you want to call it like that, uh, is much better than employer coercion. So I think that most Americans really understand the freedom fallacy uh, and they do support unions, which poll after poll shows. But some libertarians bypass the industrial class conflict argument uh, altogether by siding with consumers, right? No, so not for workers, not for employers. Um, you know, they are on the side of consumers, and you know the consumers are going to choose wisely. Um, you know what kind of uh, employer practices uh, they they want to support with the consumer dollars. We might call this consumer sovereignty as well. But I think that is not realistic, and it cannot mitigate industrial conflict because because customers generally don't care uh, and where the shirt is produced, you know, whether it's in a sweatshop in Bangladesh or in a decent company. Uh, what customers do care about uh, is price uh, and the quality of the product. Well, some libertarians might even acknowledge class conflict, but uh, counter that workers can always choose to leave their company. You know, they can choose to leave their abusive employer and they can, you know, either get out and find another job uh, that pays them better, treats uh, where the employer treats them better, uh, or they can open up their own company. Well, my response to that would be, it's good for you, right? You know, if you are so creative, if you're so brilliant and smart and you can start your own business or you can find a better job, um, then this is uh, good for the individual. But here we are not talking about individual advice, but about the experience of the average worker who, you know, will obviously not uh, be in a position to, to change his position. Um, and who is either better off in terms of wages, benefits, and rights in the job, uh, or worse off under the right to work laws, and they clearly are worse off with the right to work laws. But even by libertarian economists' own admission, if workers do find a better job, they will go for the better job. The fact that many workers don't do it indicates the terrible nature of the job market and not so much the unwillingness uh, of uh, workers to switch or the willingness, in fact, to be exploited by the employer. Uh, this uh, poor job market, in my opinion, is a real uh, restriction on the freedom of the workers, uh, which right-wing libertarians uh, tend to ignore. Uh, the capitalist has the freedom of movement and blackmail workers with redundancy. But the worker is tied to his locality in most cases and has uh, no similar method of blackmail against abusive employers. Well, in the one more argument, some libertarians might argue that if unions are good for workers, then they would voluntarily, on, on their own accord, uh, join unions. You don't have to force them to join unions, right? Because as long as, you know, workers choose it, uh, they should go for it. Um, you know, one example here is the Volkswagen Tennessee story. Um, you know, workers had a unionization vote, and a majority, a slight majority, voted against it. Um, and uh, the right wing libertarians now will proudly beat their chest and proclaim that we should accept the workers' choice. Uh, unions are therefore not good for workers, and as a clever um, VW workers had recognized, um, you know, and we would leave it at that. But I have some objections uh, to that argument. First, mostly Republican politicians, senators and governors, uh, led a misinformation campaign about how Volkswagen uh, will allegedly move the plant to Mexico if they voted in favor of unionization. This is nonsense because uh, VW management in Germany implicitly supported the unionization vote uh, because in Germany unions are represented in the corporate boardroom uh, and they were highly enthusiastic 
about the U.S. voting in favor of unionization. Um, second, these politicians also threatened that if uh, VW unionized, all tax incentive for the plant are going to be pulled off. And this is quite clearly blackmailing against uh, the workers. Uh, it has nothing to do with giving workers a free choice. But thirdly, even if one thinks that the first two points do not matter, which I think they do, um, it does not mean that workers are well informed about the choices. Um, libertarians assume that people have the freedom to decide, but that they also have all of the necessary information at their disposal. Well, but we have a strong anti-union culture uh, in the South um, as a result of you know, business and uh, politicians' propaganda. Uh, so information is not as widely available as uh, suggested. Um, and that would be, in those three points, are clearly uh, the arguments of uh, left-wing libertarians who are clearly in favor of the workers. But I want to conclude with the one more point uh, where I want to diverge with left libertarians, um, which is I don't personally mind uh, to force workers to join a union if I were, let's say, a dictator. Even if a slight majority of workers opposed joining the union right now. I assume that the workers uh, will grow to like the union once they're in it, which is the same thing with Social Security. Um, you know, before it came into place, um, people didn't know what it was. They were kind of skeptical. What kind of government program is that? But once they got into it and they draw, draw benefits from it, they're clearly in support of it. And they're certainly against uh, repealing it as the rich wanted. In addition, I have no moral qualms to coerce uh, people to embrace higher wages, better working conditions, and better taking care of the families. I will try everything I can in order to convince uh, them of the advantages of a union. Uh, but if they don't oblige, then the state still has the power to impose the common good. Well, my favorite example of soft paternalism are pensions. Right? Most workers obviously like pensions, and there's no convincing work and direct government coercion that is necessary anymore um, because workers do like it. But let us assume that libertarians even oppose pensions. Why? Because they argue that it robs the workers of their current labor and forces them uh, to save uh, for the future. But having pensions, which is another form of saying coerced savings uh, in the framework of libertarians, is still a good idea because most workers are not careful enough with money and will end up with no savings at all if they hit age 65 and they become too weak and unfit to work um, or they have to work until they die. Well, there's some libertarians who really will argue tough luck. You know, it's your own fault. Make better decisions. But I would find it view crazy. You know, why would we let uh, seniors starve and or, you know, work until they die? Um, so just just so that we can enjoy a very hollow form of liberty. Where is my freedom when I'm poor? So that, those are my arguments about uh, libertarians and unions.